Hi everyone, Mary here, and what I'm going to do is for all of our homework throughout the entire course, I am going to create videos of me doing the homework. Now, what is the purpose of these videos? Let's say you're going through a homework problem and you get stuck. Uh, that's the purpose is so that you can go to that specific problem. You can fast forward to the point where you get stuck and you can go, hopefully, aha, that's what I did wrong. Because I know how students operate. You might be doing homework at 3 a.m. or while the children are at sleep or while you're at work. And I want to make sure you get the help when and where you need it. So um, I'm going to try and do multiple videos per or multiple problems per video and I also want to show you the technique. This is how you do physics problems and these first few are pretty simple but it's the technique that I want to get down. So here goes. The very first homework problem says this. What must be your car's average speed in order for it to travel 235 kilometers in 3.25 hours. Now step one, you read through the problem and write down what you know. 2.35 kilometers, let the units be your helpers, tell you what you know. That is a displacement. It's going to travel 235 kilometers and 2.35 hours, that happens to be a time. So time is 3.25 hours. And we're looking for average speed. Well, speed is what we're looking for. Well, we have one equation for speed. Speed is change in distance divided by time. Well, 235 kilometers, that basically is our distance. We have distance, we have time. So now I'm going to put those values with their units into this equation. So speed is going to be 235 kilometers. Time is 3.25 hours, and to find out the answer, I'm going to pick up my calculator, 235 divided by 3.25, I get 72.3, what units should go on this, kilometers are on top, hours are on the bottom, always have units on numbers in physics. Notice I have three figures here, three significant figures, three significant figures, and three digits in my final answer. Now, how did I know to put this in kilometers per hour? I was not told to put it in any other units, so I chose what was simple. When in doubt, go for simple. All right, problem number two. You are driving 110 kilometers per hour along a straight road, and you look to the side for two seconds. How far did you travel during this inattentive period of driving? All right, let's write down what we know. 110 kilometers per hour, what is that? Well, that is my speed. Or actually, straight road, that's my velocity. 110 kilometers per hour. I look to the side for two seconds. What's seconds? Well, seconds happens to be a unit of time. 2.0 seconds. How far do I travel? What's far? Far is distance or displacement. So I'm looking for my distance, x. What equation do I have for a situation where I'm going at a steady speed? Well, I only have one equation. v is x over t. Now, I want to solve for x, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of algebra. I'm going to change my pen color. I want to get x alone. So how do I get rid of t? I'm going to multiply this side by t and that side by t. You do something on one side of an equation and do exactly the same thing on the other side. It will not change the equality. t divided by t will cancel, and I'm going to end up with t times v equals x and because it's convention to have the thing you're solving for on the left, I'm going to rewrite it. x is v times t. Now before I put this number and that number in here, I want to change units because look at this. Kilometers per hour and seconds. Ookity schmuckity ookity poo. What an absolute mess. I can't mix kilometers per hour and seconds. 
So something is going to have to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert kilometers per hour into meters per second. Why do you think we spent so much time converting in the last chapter? So I'm going to first off convert kilometers to meters. The thing I want to get rid of I put kitty corner from itself. I want to keep meters. If I look on my orange sheet there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. Kilometers cancels kilometers. Now do not pick up your calculator. Leave it as it is. And I'm going to circle meters as a sign to myself that says do not mess with it, Mary Jean. Leave it alone. All right, so I've got meters on the top and now I'm going to get rid of hours and I want to convert hours into seconds. If I want to get rid of hours, the thing I want to get rid of, I put kitty corner for myself. So hours are on the bottom. To get rid of it, I put it on the top. What do I put in the basement? Seconds. How many seconds are in an hour? There happen to be 3,600 seconds in one hour. I pick up my calculator and now if I, when I do the math, I'll have meters over seconds and I'm going to pick up my calculator. 110 times 1,000 equals divided by 3,600 equals 30.555 repeating. So how do I write that? Well, I have here 30 point, I'm going to round that off to 6 meters per second. That is my velocity converted. Now I can go back and put this number and my seconds into this equation, velocity 30.6 meters per second times 2 seconds. I ran out of room. I hate that when that happens. I multiply times 2 and 30.6 times 2. I'm going to put my answer down here because I ran out of room. The distance I will have traveled or displacement is 61.11 repeating seconds cancel seconds meters. Now I'm going to look for sig figs. I had three sig figs here, two sig figs there, so I'm going to round this off. 61 meters is my final answer for problem 2. Let's do one more. Let's do the next one. A person jogs eight complete laps around a quarter mile track in a time of 12.5 minutes. Calculate the average speed in meters per second. So what do I know? Total time 12.5 minutes. So I know time 12.5 minutes. The person jogs eight complete laps around a quarter mile track. Well, it's a quarter mile track and I go around it eight times. So what's eight times a quarter? Well, eight divided by four, that's going to give me a total of eight miles. So this person went a distance of eight, oh, did I say eight? two miles. I think I said something silly there. Two miles. I want to know average speed. So speed is my unknown. Speed is going to be distance divided by time. And they want to know this in meters per second. So before I put the numbers in, I've got to convert. I've got to convert miles into meters. So let's do that conversion. Two miles get rid of miles, go to meters. There are 1609 meters in a mile. Now if you're yelling right now, how do you know there's 1609 meters in a mile? From the orange sheet, that conversion sheet that I gave you. So I'm going to pick up my calculator. 2 times 1609 is 3218 meters. That's my distance. And time, I've got to convert 12 0.5 minutes, I've got to convert that to seconds. Why? Because they want this in meters per second. So get rid of minutes, keep seconds. There are 60 seconds in one minute. Minutes are on the top, minutes are on the bottom. They're going to cancel. I'm going to pick up my calculator, 12.5 times 60 equals 750 seconds. Now, 
I am going to put all of this into this equation here. I'm going to pull some space down on my sheet and change back pen colors. Speed is going to be distance divided by time. I'm just rewriting it so I don't lose anybody. 32 18 meters divided by 750 seconds. So 32 18 divided by 750 and I end up with 4.2906 repeating meters per second. When do you round off for sig figs? At the very, very end. Carry as many digits as you can throughout the entire process and round out at the end if you can. Now let's take a look. How many sig figs did I start with? I started out with three here and quarter mile track. We're going to pretend that's three because that's the number I was given. So if I round this off to three sig figs, it's going to be 4.29 meters per second. That's part A. Let's take a look at part B. Part B said, woo, where's part B? Part B says, calculate the average velocity in meters per second. This is tricky, tricky, tricky because velocity, if you recall, is speed plus position or direction. So if I start out here, and this person goes around eight times and he ends up at the same place, what is his change in displacement from beginning to end? Well, velocity is change in displacement over time. And no matter what his time is, if he ends up at exactly the same position, he has zero displacement. So for part B, what is his average velocity? Zero. Part B is tricky, tricky, tricky. All right, that is all there is to the first three, and I'll come back later and do a couple more. See